Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of The Buzz, your social media program on television. It's another Friday on the show and you know, basically we'll bring you what's happening in the world of entertainment, especially as it trends on social media. My name is Patience Bilo Kapo. Welcome to the program this Friday afternoon, the 24th of May 20. 19. As usual, I have a full table uh, this afternoon. Uh, let me quickly run by the uh, introductions. Uh, I have Oluwa from Layo Ibutoluwa Ajayi, popularly known and called Fumi Sags. I mean, she's one of the best female saxophonists in Nigeria, as it were. Good afternoon. Great to have you here. Yes. I've Thank had you, you on the show like years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Fumi. Thank you. All right, also joining us is one of our regulars on Friday. She <laughs> is a renowned journalist with the Daily Times newspaper, and she's also a celebrity uh, publicist. Mutiat Ali Laware is here again. Hi, Mutiat. Hi. It's a chilling Friday. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm already in the mood. I'm in the mood, too. Welcome, Mutiat. Thank you for having me. Also on the table, first timer. Uh, her name is Grace Renner. Uh, she's a model, amongst other things. Not only is she a model, she's using her capacity to create a platform for uh, young and upcoming models as well. Welcome, Grace, to the show. Thank you very wow. much. Wow, you all look beautiful. It's, a, it's, like, it's, it's an all ladies affair today. <laughs> yes, it's an all ladies affair. All right, we're going to take a very quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, we'll be starting with uh, social media news. Don't go away. We'll be back. <laughs> There's a smarter way to live with Airtel Binge Plan, the ideal data plan for those heavy data moments. Get a 2 gigabyte daily binge plan for 500 Naira. Dial star 141 hash to activate. Live smarter with data. Airtel, the smartphone network. send his birthday greetings to uh, one of our own. His name is Tosi B. He's a renowned gospel artist. For those who know him, today is Tosi B's birthday. Happy birthday to you. And this a greeting, heartfelt greeting at that is coming from myself and also Donald of My Africa Media. Congratulations, Tosi. Hope you will send the cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready, ladies, for social media news? First story. Uh, Bonner Boy Tenny Mr. Easy get BET nomination. Bonner Boy Mr. Easy and Tenny have all been nominated for the 2019 BET Awards. The music stars have been nominated in the Best New International Act and Best International Act category, respectively. While Tenny has been nominated in the Best New International Act category, Bonner Boy and Mr. Easy have been nominated in the Best International Act category. Bonner Boy and Mr. Easy were nominated alongside South African rapper AKA, UK Act Dave and Giggs, and Aya Nakamura and Dose from France. Tenny also was nominated alongside Show Majosi from South Africa, Heady One and Octavian from the UK, and Francis Joker and Nestle for the best new international act category. The 2019 BET Awards, of course we know, uh, will come up on the 24th of June and it's gonna be aired live across seven Viacom networks, including BET and the MTV. All right, Mutia, this is your 40. <laughs> All right, uh, Okay, um, it's good. Tenny, Mr. Easy, Bonoboy, BET Award. Like we usually discuss on the program here, um, it shows that Nigerian music is traveling far. We are appreciated far and wide. And you all, as, as we all know, music is a global thing yes. that connects several countries together. Mm -hmm. So for Nigerian artists, year in, year out, 
we get BET nomination, you know, from Tiwa Savage to Whiskey to Davido, Davido you know, yes. and now we have, in fact, the singing sensation among them, Tenny. Mm -hmm. I think this is a good platform for her. And we only hope that um, Nigerian, you know, the Nigerian art on this um, category will come home with their award. Mm. Okay. You want to say something else? Well, I'm just wishing them well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Same as myself. Uh, I wish all of them well. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, like you said, Mutia, yeah, this is a really, like, from the tail end of last year into this year has been so big, really huge for Tenny. For Tenny, you know, there's been no stopping this girl. And really, for her to be nominated. Alongside Shoma Josie, of South Africa, I don't know if you know about Shoma Josie. Like, then you know it is a big thing, you know. Even yeah. if she doesn't win in this category, the nomination is nominated. Yeah. It is a good one. All right, moving on. Still on Bonner Boy. Bonner Boy wins Africa Artist of the Year Award at the VGMAs. Nigerian superstar Bonner Boy a few days ago said he was going off social media. But that has not stopped their words from rolling in for him. At the just concluded Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, which held last Saturday, uh, Bonaboy won the Africa Artist of the Year Award. This same award was won by David Do last year. Now, still on the Ghana Music Awards, of course, if you watched that particular award on TV, you would have seen the controversy, all of the uh, controversies that followed, you know, and, and it's, it's not really mm -hmm. the first time. For every edition of the Ghana Music Awards, as with some awards in Nigeria too, artists are always complaining of uh, lack of fairness, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And of course, Shatawale, or Shatawale, Shatawale, whatever you <laughs> want to call it, you know, has been one very vocal artist in that regard, even though he does tend towards becoming violent. So at this year's award, of course, he brought his full regalia, you know, to the <laughs> award. <laughs> and of course, we all know that he attacked a stone boy mm -hmm. on stage. Well, consequently, organizers of Ghana Music Awards have banned Shatawale mm -hmm. and stone boy indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Announcing the sanctions for the two dance hall artists, chairman of the VGMA board, Nat Drew Aman Ziba said the two artists are also to return the award flags they won on the night of the event. He said Stoneboy and Shatawale have lost their legibility for the VGMA nominations, selections, and performances. He also noted that the decision was taken after careful deliberations and extensive consultation with stakeholders in the music industry. All right, all right for those of you that missed out, and you did not see what actually transpired, you know, at the, the recently concluded uh, Ghana Music Award, which was on Saturday, this past Saturday. Um, Stone Boy was actually announced as, I think, the reggae dance hall artist of the year. Yeah, the, the winner. And Shatawale, of course, right? that didn't yeah. go down well with him. And he cool went and attacked him yeah. on stage while he was about to receive his award. And Stone Boy pulled a gun yeah. on him. Anyways, this is the clip. Let's take it quickly. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and pleasure to present the winner of Reggae Dance Hall Artist of the Year.
and watch the full whatever. But I mean, they almost, you know, match the whole of the awards. No, not even for, almost. The award was mad. Okay. Not even almost. Mm. You know, um, the award was mad mm. at the end of the day because. Um, you know, everybody knows um, Shatawal. If you, if, you, if you are his follower on social media, mm -hmm. you can you can know his personality. Of so you know, seeing that, nobody expected that he would take that um, a little bit higher mm -hmm. at at the award. So for the award organizers, um, I think they've done the right thing. You both yeah. won an award. Return the plaque. Mm -hmm. So when you return the plaque, I'm sure um, probably they can go back to their table, you know, and do their mathematics mm -hmm. correctly. <laughs> then uh, you know. These days, awards in Nigeria generally uh, comes um, with this um, kind of package. Mm -hmm. Every Nigerian artist believes no award is credible. Mm -hmm. So I think it boils down to organizers. I, I'm, I'm only employing Nigerians and organizers of awards that um, it's important to show how credible your award is. It happens in you know, Nigeria, Lagos to be precise, when some categories of award are being reeled out and we see the nomination. It's simple. You can't nominate an artist like, um, let's say, Olamide. You have um, maybe a less popular artist in mm -hmm. such category. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we all know an example. Olamide is supposed to take the plaque. Then we have the lesser artist mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. the plaque. We know something is wrong. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Then. So I think um, award organizers need to also put this in check. Mm -hmm. Let all award be credible. If it's the voting process, let's, let's see the voting process. Merit. Let yes. it be open. Let's see the, the graphs. And let awards be given based on merit. Yes. yes. You know. Yeah. For me, you you're an artist too. Do you think the award system, you know, is credible? Well, to me, <laughs> we're in my own field of gospel. You know, like, well, to I don't know how they really do it. Mm -hmm. but to the people that I've seen, they've given award, which I was also taking some, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, people come in a way that they watched you, you know, on different levels, and they see that you are consistent with what you're doing, mm -hmm. and you are improving on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they decide to honor you, not because you have money to buy the pain, okay. not because you are so popular, but okay. based on, you know, how influential right. your music is. You know, okay, I get that. So in the gospel area, yeah, you know, you think they're doing it's well. It's well. Okay, anyways, away from the Ghana <laughs> Music Awards. But anyways, for those who don't know, Shatawale was banned in 2013, you know, because he actually criticized the award system in that particular year. And the ban was only lifted last year. And here we are again, you know, so <laughs> indefinitely, uh, he'll never change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, going forward, Cardi B cancels concert due to complications arising from plastic surgery. According to TMZ, Cardi B is backing out of a Memorial Day weekend concert in Maryland as a result of the complications from a plastic surgery that she recently had. Cardi B was supposed to headline the 92Q Spring Bling Festival, which is billed to take place in Baltimore today, Friday today. Sources close to Cardi says she wants to try and heal from her recent liposuction and breast augmentation. <laughs> TMZ also reports that the complications have gotten so bad and she simply cannot perform. Uh, and her doctors, of course, have encouraged her that she needs time to let the swelling go down and for her body to fully recover. Doctors are recommending a couple of weeks of rest, okay? Anyways, here we go, Karine. Get well soon. Right. Get well soon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to throw this uh, to, to you, um, Grace, because you are a model and looks appearances you know and all of that you know uh it's very critical very key you know in modeling and, and all of that so for an artist to go this far how do you view it as a model yourself do you think it's a bit too much well um i i believe that anything that makes you go to the extreme is is no longer beauty hmm. so what i always preach to models is do whatever is as natural as possible. There's exercise that you can do to make your tummy look flatter. Mm. There's um, dieting you can do. Eat right. 
you get the results you want. So let the beauty come from within as well. Okay. Proper rest and things like that. Mm. So to do surgery, I, I don't want to say it's bad because if you have the money, I want to do it. Mm. But then again, I would advise against it and I'll tell you to do other things, other alternatives that will help you stay natural and beautiful. Wow, okay. <laughs> get well soon. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Cardi B, I mean, this is not like her first surgery. She had her first uh, surgery when she was 19. Of course, you know, uh, she used to be um, a stripper, you know, and of course your body has got to be picture perfect if you, you know, know what i mean so, yes but the problem is you know because she's a very busy artist bookings back to back you know uh, when you do these surgeries you have to rest for about four or five months you to know so that your body can because you're putting a foreign thing inside or removing part of your body needs to get this but she just doesn't have that time so every time she goes for surgery she goes back to work like almost immediately so this is like her body and it backfires. And her like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, we have to. So, anyways, we have a clip of Cardi B talking about her life perception. Let's take that one back. Later on, I'm going to talk more about the process, you know, like when you see somebody they have lipo, you think that they just go in the doctors and like, boop, you come out and you look amazing. And it's actually like a very long process recovery. It actually takes a little bit more than three or four months. And like the, the stages is very frustrating. It's uh, sometimes they get a little bit discouraging. You have to get like your massages all the time. And sometimes it might not come out how you want it to be. But I'll talk about it a little bit later. But right now, I'm actually enjoying it and it's just like what I don't like is that a lot of people is like oh she did abs sketching she did abs sketching and it's like no 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 I always had abs and I'm a very skinny person so when they're taking extra fat out and your skin is tiny more like my bones actually show more so it's like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Mutiat, you are a celebrity publicist. You work with all the celebrities, and you know, even though they are not talking about it, Nigerian celebrities now they are, are doing it, doing so much plastic surgery. Mm. 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 I can only advise them mm. to please mellow down, yeah. because uh, you know, let, let's take for instance, as if you're an actress and you've gone through plastic surgery, you know, you've done breast enlargement, you've done butt enlargement, hips and you know, all sort of enlargement. Remember, you need to take proper care of yourself. Just, it, just a typical example is what we just saw on the screen, Cardi B, saying, when you do this, it takes three to four months to heal up. But most of our Nigerian celebrities, they are back from whatever country, Turkey, UK, you know, to have this thing. And in two weeks, they are back on set. You have to see what they spent money on. Of course, from the picture, you know, you know, Tommy tucked in, you know. But I can only advise, hmm? remember your children. Yeah. Yes, it's very key. Because at the end of this thing comes with repercussion. Of course. You, you want to slay today, tomorrow you are gone. Mm -hmm. Your health is key. Mm -hmm. If you are reducing the fat from the upper side to the lower side, please let them take it in moderation. <laughs> yes, in moderation. But I will advise. You don't need this. You are beautifully made. Yes. God created you to look the way you are. So why are you telling God that he has not done well? Mm. Well, mm. Mama B, oh, you want to slim down? Mm. <laughs> you say, I said, mm. <laughs> yeah, when Fela stays around you, you know? <laughs> Anyways, moving this along from Cardi B, Baba Frayo allegedly beaten by fake soldiers. Baba Fryer is presently nursing injuries sustained after he was allegedly beaten by men of the Nigerian army. The veteran singer took to his Facebook page last week Sunday and shared photos of his brut brutally assaulted face, as you can see on the screen. According to him, he was humiliated by the soldiers and they were able to get away with the aid of a female soldier. Well, incidentally, <laughs> the soldier was actually a fake one, hmm. wow. Mohammed Ishak, and he's been arrested over the brutality meted on Baba Fryer. The arrest was made possible with the aid of original, authentic men of the Nigerian <laughs> army. And of course, the remaining suspects are still at large, but uh, 
You know, the guy who perpetrated the act has already been arrested. Amen. Who doesn't know Baba Kayo first of all? Like <laughs> to have beaten him up to that extent. I can't even oh, recognize him. From the pictures here. Yeah. It's a very sad one. If Baba Kayo, you know, who everybody should know. Veteran. You know, is beaten up like then how about those of us that nobody knows? <laughs> Well, Mini Nigerian. <laughs> but I mean, this this should send like a signal to everybody. If a fake soldier can do this, can do this original. <laughs> I mean, the, the boldness, the country of the guy in the first place. You know, you are not even like a, a military man, and then you go and wear the uniform of a military man, and you take it a step further, and then you are you are actually beating up civilians, Abby. Look here. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, let's. Sorry, Baba Frayo. God will heal you. <clears throat> then I'm um, fine. It's a fake um, uniform person who did this to him. But um, I just want to appeal to Nigerians and especially the military men. We see these things happen around when probably a bike man mistakenly hits the car of. A military person. The way they beat, at least I've witnessed once, you know, once or twice, in, you know, on Ikorodu Road. The way the guy was beaten, all because you're wearing a uniform. Common story will solve this thing, but at times, some of our Nigerian um, armed forces, the police, you know, they, they want to take laws into their hand, and this is not supposed to be so. You can only beg, Baba Frayo. <laughs> You know, like um, two days ago, something happened around Maryland. You know, there were a, a policeman saw a bike man carry somebody mm -hmm. you know, towards the traffic light, trying to go towards um, Ojota. Okay. You know, and he quickly ran to catch the bike guy. But I think he missed the guy. But a lady sitting behind the Okada mm -hmm. drew the girl's hand. What? And it was close to, the girl was close to like falling down fully mm -hmm. and a car was mm -hmm. oh wow yeah. and I, I just had to park and i ran towards the police and i see that it's very very you know useless now and everybody came and started you know insulting me that you do you are not even sensitive of what you're about to do mm -hmm. all you just needed to do is to get this bike and you didn't get him and you saw that a lady was the passenger, was the passenger and you could not even let you know, let them go, you know, and you just give the lady, and the lady was found by the silencer. Hmm. And, the, and the, the bike even left the lady. Wow. Wow. I think all this sort of things, you, you want to add to that? <coughs> you know, I, I have seen them, you know, do these things, and they beat these guys up brutally, you know, and... Well, there was even one on social media. I think there was a mistake. Another car hit their car, and the next thing they did was to deflate all the four yeah, tires. Yes, yes. This thing, they take it to the extreme. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Or they just take you to barracks. And once you enter the barracks, <laughs> you are gone. Okay. But having said that, we all know how some of these uh, uniform people behave. But we need to give kudos to uh, the men of Ojo Barracks, you know, who rose up to the occasion and made sure they, they caught the fake soldiers, <laughs> you know, and all that. I mean, doing this to Baba Fryo, I don't think it's nice. It's not nice to anybody at all. Yeah. I mean, they almost blinded him from the pictures. So sorry about that. All right, so that's it on social media news for this week. Uh, yes, it's taking you around social media. Now back to the table. Like I introduced uh, earlier, we have Fumi Sachs here, and of course, Grace Renner is here as well, and we'll be talking about what you guys have been up to recently. We'll start with you, Fumi. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yes. Mm. Good to see you. Good to see you again. <laughs> So what have you been up to? Well, um, I've been up both uh, traveling and outside and all around trying to do what I know how to do best. Mm. And then um, it's been better you know, than before. You know, at least the awareness came. And now, you know, the name now rings a bell. Now rings a bell. Uh, mm. You go to police and all that. Mm. And then, um, you know, music has been, it's not easy, but with God, all things are possible, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I didn't give up, 
because I believe it works as me. And um, I, I really want to do it. Mm. It's not that I just want to do it. I saw it like a calling to do it. And that's why I've been pushing. And God has really helped me to. Okay, I know you are an instrumentalist, yes. you know. But picking a saxophone, a saxophone is not really a very feminine musical instrument. Why the saxophone? Oh, well, um, before I, you know, I started playing the sax, I loved um, to listen to Kenny G. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, <laughs> even before looking at what the saxophone looks like, now I, I listen to Kenny G a lot, maybe on radio, even if I don't know the kind of instrument. But I love the sound I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, Kenny G is a soul, you know, guy. Mm -hmm. And that sound pierced through my heart, you mm -hmm. know. And so when I got you know, in touch with the saxophone, I just, there was a connection immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like this is what I'm hearing. And, <laughs> yes. and this is it. And this is it. And, mm -hmm. You know, though I, I started as a brigade mm -hmm. band in the church, okay. playing the side drum and all that. But when I saw the sax, mm -hmm. I had to change the color. You know, mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you've been playing the sax for you how know, many years now? 14 years. 14, 14. years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know artists normally have names mm -hmm. for their. What's the name of this one? This Akonke. Akonke. Why is it Akonke? She. Okay, is a she. she. Yes, she. she. Okay, for sure. She's our first love. So, how do you care for Akonke? Ah, okay. Sometimes mm. I date Akonke. <laughs> Yes, I saw the way you were protecting oh, yeah. that on the table. I don't. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I look for where it's convenient. Do you back Akonke? I back Akonke. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right. Do you do you want to blow Akonke? Akonke? Yes. 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 Let's hear what Akonke sounds like. Yeah. yeah. We have the music. <laughs> okay. All right. So what's this one called? This is a mouthpiece. No, what's the what you're going to oh, play for okay. us? Okay, yeah, it's just um, like um, a long to the okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Just like a worship song. Alright. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. for that um i don't want to blame it on the celebrities but let me just say the way it is i noticed that um brands have shifted mm. 
towards you know the celebrities they mm -hmm. now use celebrities to play the role that models used to play used to play in the past yeah, yeah. thereby making models insignificant of course yeah so that's that's mm -hmm. it really you, you remember the days you used to see models on billboards yes and all but mm -hmm. now you see celebrities you know and, and all yes of that. And, and it's really affecting the models financially and generally you know mm -hmm. the confidence is no longer there mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I started the project that mm. I'm going to talk about. Mm. Meet the Models yes. Evolution. Yes. Okay, tell me a bit more about that. Okay, so Meet the Models TV show started in 2015. Um, at the time, it was just about interviewing models, top models, you know, to get them to inspire aspiring models and then to teach them some things they know about the industry. But um, at some point, I knew it wasn't enough. I thought, okay, there's still some problem to be solved. You know, so I said, okay, let's start an evolution series, something, an edition where we have facilitators come and train models. We need to work on the minds of these people, you know. So this series, we got some professionals from the modeling industry and outside the modeling industry, because we know that the, um, the year that a model has to model for is very short. Very short. Yes. Yeah, so we thought, okay, what can we do? To make these models realize that there's a life after modeling so we got these people that are big in their own fields and then they you know deposited some really strong things in their minds so the models that we train understand that we don't only have to model we can do other things to shine and then these brands can recognize us as well really yes. like what dancing <laughs> not just dancing Singing. some mm -hmm. of them said they're good at writing okay you know some of them said they're good bloggers they could do blogging some said, oh yeah, dancing. Some said they're good actors. There are many things, you know, we're able to discover some hidden talents in these people. Over the years, models have only poured all their potentials into modeling. But with this project, we're able to discover some hidden talents that they were not paying attention to just because they wanted to be models. Mm. Yes. Okay, I think it's not only brands that sold the market for models. <laughs> I think the advent of selfie, yeah, you know, also affected. <laughs> if, you, yes. if you if you know what I'm going to talk about, everybody can take a selfie, and you're like your own model. Yes. You know, I've seen designers who would normally use a model to model their out outfit today. They basically do their own thing themselves. They wear yeah, their, their own, own influencers. Take a selfie, yeah. and they're, 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 so social media has sort of affected you know yeah. the modeling business in, you know are young ladies still even interested in modeling oh yes a they lot are. of models i mean every day i get text messages direct messages from models saying oh i want to be a model how can you help me this and that you know and that is what this project is also all about we've made them understand that you, you can do a lot more you can be a lot more than just be a model what what else can you bring to the table mm -hmm. because social media is everywhere everybody is a model now like you said you know so what else what can these brands look at and say okay yes this one is standing out in your neck about yes mm -hmm. you know yeah but so a lot of people are still interested in modeling but mm -hmm. we're now trying to make them see another dimension mm -hmm. of modeling it's not just about wearing clothes and working on the runway it's you are a lot more than that. Mm. That's what we're trying to preach. You're making now. a lifestyle more yes. like. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, interesting. <laughs> interesting. You know. Right, so, what was the response like? You know, when you did the series. Okay. Yes. Um. For a start, when we put it on Instagram, we had over a thousand, about one thousand three hundred and thirty-seven applicants. Then for the audition, we had about over a hundred. I wasn't able to get the number. Over a hundred people showed up for the audition. And then we cut them down to eleven, finally. But since the show, eleven, yes, <laughs> <laughs> because we could only accommodate that number. We just needed one. The idea behind this show was not only to train the models, but we had um, a slot, a slot in Milan. An agency wants to hire models from Nigeria, so we thought, okay, let's not only make it a competition, let's add other things to it because these issues have been bothering me for years. You know, so I thought, okay, this is an opportunity to bring some form of change in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, so this was about models and also about them traveling to Milan and then about reforming the industry. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make a lot of noise, make okay. sure that. Yes. So since we're talking about reforming the industry, yes. can we also talk about breaking the stereotype? You know, uh, when you talk about modeling, where you have to be skinny, like a toothpick, you know, for <laughs> you to be acknowledged as, as a good good model. We've seen a lot of shows where plus size, curvy, 
the Covey models. <laughs> You know, the, the short, mo the short yeah. model. <laughs> but we know internationally how, you know, you should actually still look as a model. Can we break that stereotype? Do you see that time when it comes? Yes. I, I mean, I've watched American Next Top Model for a long time now. Mm. And from time to time, I see Tara Brown bring a plus-size model plus to her show. Mm. And I've seen one where a plus-size model actually won the competition. Mm. Yes. So I, I, I think, apart from the fact that some agencies or some um, designers want a specific body type. Mm. I feel that here in Nigeria, it's been broken already. You see a plus size girl saying that she's a model, yeah. and you see her on major gigs. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm sure that from Nigeria to the world. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. as you were saying something. Yes. Uh, you know, I I like your initiative, but I just want you to stress for that. You know, a lot of Nigerians, a, a lot of youths. I mean who want to double into modeling, they feel modeling ends on just the, the walk, on the, on, on the runway. Mm -hmm. Forgetting the fact that if you're not doing wrong where you could be b-board, you know, you can do b-board advert, you can do other commercial, please. I just want you to stress. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. But it's not as it used to be anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, um, based on what you said. Um, every day people text me and say, oh, I'm 5'5", five five. I'm short, but I want to be a runway model. I tell them plainly, no designer will want you to be in the outfit on the runway because for them, they want to see you looking like a hanger. Sorry, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yeah, no, but, but then, you know, there are, lots of, <laughs> there are lots of opportunities in the modeling industry mm. for people that are that height okay. or that are big. Mm. TV commercials, for example, yeah. calendar, nobody would ask you at a TV commercial audition how tall are you. If you fit the profile, maybe facially or bodily, quickly you get the job. So it's not just modeling, there are different types of modeling. And these people that want to be models, they should use their internet to find out what types of modeling are there. And then Where which do one is fit fitting. Yes. Yeah. You cannot be a runway model if you are shorter than 5'8". Some designers might like your work and take you at 5'7", mm -hmm. but you know, look for other ones so that you don't keep pushing pushing, pushing, and then you don't fit the portfolio or the profile for that particular job. Mm. Okay, let me ask you one quick last question before we take a break. In your time, how rewarding really was it being a model? I, I, it was really rewarding. Mm. In fact, I saw it dwindle. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I used modeling to pay my school fees. Wow. I used modeling for my house rent at some point. Mm -hmm. I used modeling to you know, support my family wow. at some point, yes. So it was really rewarding. I used it to start buying a land. Ah, ah. Two plots, actually. Imagine. So yes, at some point it was rewarding. Mm. But um, social media and <laughs> brands, celebrities have coming and everything yeah yes <laughs> that's sad all right Fumi Sachs is still on the show as well as Grace Jenner and Mutia Sali Laure we're going to take a quick music break let's go feel Fumi Sachs doing two back breeze we'll be right back <laughs> Bye. 
um, that music break, that's from that phrase by Kumi Sax. And uh, thank you, uh, Jonah Bulus, for that message all the way from Kaduna. We do appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Okay, Kumi. So, uh, how many albums now? Uh, I have like two albums. Two. Okay. What is your latest work? Uh, I'm, I'm running a single now, mm -hmm. which is going to be out soon. Mm -hmm. so, What's the title? No title. No title, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> As I come, you know, mm -hmm. first of all, I bring the music, you know, and work on what we are learning, you know, what we are hearing, mm -hmm. and then maybe in between the, the line, the music becomes. Okay. <laughs> right, let me ask you one question. You know, when you go for your, your musical engagements, you know, uh, especially outside Nigeria, after your performances, uh, what has been the most rewarding comment, you know, you've ever received from one of your fans? Oh, well, it's, it's, I guess a lot of encouragement. Mm -hmm. like, most of them makes me feel as if they've never heard such a thing before. Mm -hmm. And they, they come telling me that, wow, the way you handle, you know, you play effortlessly. Like, you know, they've seen other saxophone that plays, and maybe all their hair is showing, and mm. they are sweating so badly. And <laughs> 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 you know? But the way I play, mm -hmm. you know, is I see nothing is coming out, mm. but I'm actually dropping something. Just so they, so they, they come to tell me that you make playing of saxophone look so yes. easy. It is not mm -hmm. easy. It is not. I feel like it was. <laughs> I was just blowing saliva. Like, <laughs> no sound was coming out. Like I'm serious. I, I don't know how they do it. It's very difficult to play the saxophone. I know. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. So you mastered your game over the years. True. True. All right. So what should your fans look out for? Well, well, just keep looking out because um, I'm coming out big again. Mm. Mm. I'm going to keep it short soon. Hmm. Yeah. Don't so score the goal. Who's high? Okay, all right. Because our time is fast running, Grace. Okay, so uh, this training you're giving the models, what is different about it as against what we what we already know, where they are taught how to catwalk and all of that? <laughs> well, this is an empowerment kind of training. Mm -hmm. Okay, this last edition we got. Falashade Medebem from Lafarge. Mm. She came to train them on virtue. You notice that you know in the industry is really lacking. Virtue is lacking a lot. We had the um, Ubon King. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> Discipline. Yes. A lot of creative people, you know, they are non conformist yes. and usually lack discipline. You know what I, I'm talking about. So yes. that's very important. Yes. And we had them, um, Ubon King, he came to train them on multiple streams of income. Okay. Yes, you're a model, but you can be other things. You know, we had Joanna Pepe, the convener of the assembly. She came to train them on discipline, like you mentioned, you know, being able to reach for their goals. They're young, you know, being able to discover themselves at an early age. We had um, um, Adesonya, Ni Adesonya, he came to teach them on um, presentation skills. You know, being able to present themselves as models, not just as models, but when they go for interviews, job interviews and things like that. So we didn't just center it on modeling. We only had a catwalk trainer come train them. But every other thing that we did had to do with other aspects of their lives that we want them to discover early mm -hmm. so that they don't waste their time just pursuing only modeling. And then at some time, at some point in life, they're too old to now start trying to discover themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was really what the evolution series was about. I like that. Thank you. I like what you're doing. At least you're you're, you're getting the young people focused, mm -hmm. you know, early. Uh, thank you for saving the human mm -hmm. race because <laughs> we all know very soon the, the, the we are going extinct. Robots are taking over. Yes. <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, yeah. just a few short years ago, modeling was everything. But the here we thing. are, you know, and we are evolving. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of jobs will become very insignificant in, in the nearest future. Yeah. It's true. So as a human being, you need to start thinking outside of the box. How much more can I do? What more can I do? What yes. more can I give to, you know, so that I, I remain um, relevant. That? relevant. Relevant, yes. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Mutiax, is journalism going extinct? No, now. 
interested if it if it's actually going to me and you <laughs> we're, in the, we're in this business together yeah, now Media, yeah, you know, so. all because of social media. Yeah. Wow. On okay. social media, you have the editor, the writer, Everybody. the cameraman, one person. One person. One person. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So whatever you're doing, mm. start thinking beyond of it. Yeah. Think broadly. Think out of the box. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. You can give out your social media handle so your mm. fans can follow. Social media handle is Fumi Sacks. Actually, on Instagram. Fumi Sacks Ajayi. Yes. Okay. On Instagram and. Mm-hmm. How about you, Grace? Okay, my social media handle, my personal social media handle is Grace Ekelma. That's E K E O M. Yes. Mm. And then the one for Meet the Models is um, at Meet the Models on Instagram. Okay. All right, Mutiat. What's it, yours? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. At Mutilicious. Mutilicious. Underscore. underscore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you everyone. It's been a very interesting Friday with you guys. Thank you for me. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. And keep the flag flying. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been a good week because of you, you, and you there. Once again, happy birthday to you, Tosibi. Have a good year. We'll see you next week. God willing, enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.